Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. We're here with another rig rundown episode brought to you by Bendix and make sure to stick around to the end of the episode to find out how you can win a complete ultimate upgrade brake package for your four wheel drive. Now behind me is the Cummins Power Patrol from Skid Factory so let's jump in for a closer look. All right, so we're here with Al. We're actually at Land Cruiser Park, which is sweet. This is his second time four-wheel driving, kind of proper. So if you want to check that out, we're filming out here with Skid Factory. Pretty sure when this releases, you're releasing this week? Yeah. So Wednesday? Yeah. Tomorrow, if you're watching this now, it'll be on tomorrow, or actually tonight, because this is a two-part. So it is a Wednesday, which means right now, I'll link it down below, check out the episode where they take this thing up. Some pretty gnarly tracks. How was it with those? It's it, good. I haven't it made a lot of four-wheel driving experience, but yeah, this thing, it's pretty capable. And you'll soon find out why. So let's jump in for a look. Let's start with just, I guess, the exterior. It's not heap going on. We've got a steel bull bar. Is that a Dobinson bar? Dobinson bar, yeah. Yep. Um, spotties are... Ridge Rider, I think. Ridge Rider spotties. Yeah. Now, it is winch compatible. You haven't got one in there. Yeah, I haven't you got probably a winch. need it, really. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like it. But yeah. I guess when you mess up, you can... You can always have a winch, it's always You get your hand. mate's winch, eh? But weight is a problem. Yeah. That's why there's no winch. And so that's because that, of what's under there. Yeah, so we'll get into the engine bay in a sec. So running down the side, the snorkel, did you make that one? I made this because yep. obviously it's on the wrong side of the car for a normal patrol thing. So. It's pretty funny what you've done the other side. It looks quite good actually, you've just plated it off. You're like, I'm not getting a new guard. Oh. Just... <laughs> They're too expensive, so Put I just plated right. up the old hole with a piece of stainless steel with a powder coat on it. Looks fat. Um, I guess while we're here, we'll talk about suspension as well. So we've got, these are the Nitto Ridge Grappler, not Trail Grapplers. Yeah, so that's the mid yep. um, between an all-terrain and the proper muds. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a bit of a best of both worlds kind of thing. Yep. As far as noise goes, seems to work all right. And um, the rims are steely. Uh, fake beadlock steel. Yeah, fake beadlock. They're not real I ones. think they're kings or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's good to have a steel. You can kind of bash them out if yeah. you get a tint in them. Now the whole lift overall is what, about three inch it looks? It's it's two inches. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's it's custom because of the engine and that, like with the weight, yep. but um, I don't know. You, you, you be the judge, what do you reckon, three inch? It looks about three, yeah. yeah. Sitting up there, gee, between a two and a three, you've got what, hydraulic bump stops, it's all Dobson gear as well, yeah? So Yeah, so we put hydraulic bump stops in so we could adjust the, the bump height for the, the engine, so the steering arms don't hit the sump and that sort of thing strengthen the, the strut tower for the weight of the engine and it's got um, like a remote reservoir Dobinson shocks and yep um, and springs so yeah it seems right. to work pretty well we'll keep moving down um, sliders Dobson as well yeah they're kind of a sort of a slider sort of a step step yeah actually they're normally clamped onto the chassis rail but I, I um, welded kind of like fish plates sort of thing onto the oh, rails okay. to, to properly mount them um, like stiffly so yep Slight improvement there over what you, what you can do in your garage because I've got the gear. Yeah, yeah. No, sweet. Um, roof rack, just a little flat rack there, something simple. Yeah. Throw some swag and stuff up. The awning is a XTM. Full wrap around. Yeah, XTM. XTM, what do you call them? Fox wing? Something yeah, also like 270 degree. Yeah. This is That's pretty much the, the way to go with awnings, I reckon. So you get that up. cover around the back there. So now rear bar, looking at this, it looks sort of custom, is it? Yeah, we just made the whole thing from scratch and mate um, sort of designed it. He's, yep. a, he's a, um, a boiler maker and, and other things, so yep. he just drew it all up and then we just made it with a um, Bailey tube bender. Yeah, it looks good with these dimple dyes and everything. Yeah. Is it that tough look? Once you get extreme? a dimple dye thing, you can't not use it. <laughs> yeah, no, Everything's dimple dyed. It looks uh, good. Came out alright. Uh, yep. Seems to do the job. Spare on the back, bin bag, all the essentials. Fresh wiper blade. Oh yeah, it looks mint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, while we're here, we'll jump in the back. Let's do the interior as the rear and the inside because there's not a heap going on. Are you going to do more in here? Or? I cleaned the hay out because it used to be a um, like a horse hauler. Yep. Horse, trip, horse float hauler. It was a standard, completely standard car. Yep. So yeah, we just added the XM drawer. Uh, it's just got recovery gear in it that we haven't had to pull out yet. Yep. I wood. do really like that draw. Actually, a couple of the boys here are running um, the XTM stuff, and it's there's a lot going on. There's a draw, there's a pull-out table, there's yeah, a fridge a slide, cutter, there's like yeah. a cutting board and everything. It's unreal. It's so, pretty cool. 
Awesome. All right, well, let's jump in the front and see what's going on in there. All righty, inside the vehicle. Pretty standard, nothing it's majorly custom. Factory but... tracked uh, <laughs> GU4 dash. Look at that, amazing. Standard. Um, I guess the, the standouts are the, the shifter. So it was a manual, now it's an auto, 4 l ADE. Yep. Um, this shifter is like a, it's basically just shot through the floor with the with the standard boot on it, but it's uh, obviously, you know, the usual auto stuff, plus it's got a Tiptronic function that you can sort of go across and yep. change like that. You've made it look very nice and factory. So this is like the manual That's boot the manual and everything. Boot, and yeah. Yeah, we just it plated well. in underneath the, so we could, so, you know, it's like mounted onto, onto a plate with a cable. Yep. Um, diff locks, obviously. Yeah, I've seen them. A couple Arab of e-lockers. E-lockers, yep. yep. A few light bar things here and there. Yep. Um, What's going on here? We're seeing gauges and screens and knobs and all sorts. That's a GFB D force. That's a um, boost control, yep. boost pressure gauge, and uh, boost uh, EGTs. Yep. Um, so that's yeah, sort of pretty easy to see what's going on. It boosts to the wherever it wants to. So I don't know, 40 psi, something like that. Yeah. Um, this is for the auto control computer. It's a display for. Um, it's a HDM Compu shift that controls the auto. Yep. So it gives you all speed and pretty much everything that the auto's computer's seeing, I can see it on there. So yeah, that's um, pretty handy to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. The original gauges all work as per GU. Yep. Uh, this thing here is a so it's like an adjustable, an AFC Live. It's a power-driven diesel product. It basically allows you to adjust the fueling rate on the um, P pump. So yep. it's got an old train locomotive fuel pump on it full mechanical as basic as you can get mm. and that that's basically just a sort up and down uh, dial really <laughs> yeah. uh, so is there an ecu that controls that motor or no. is pure mechanical well yep. this is purely mechanical it's just a, some you know like dial <laughs> valves really they just mm. you just wind it in now it's just a needle valve that changes yeah. the how much boost pressure gets to the um, compensator on the back of the p pump yep Wow. So um, you basically, we tuned it um, to, you know, full noise, full smoke, whatever. Yep. And then this you can just take take out the, the smoke power, whatever, you know. It's an old P-pump, so it does, it's not it's not a nice, clean, common rail yeah. uh, engine, uh, pump, which is why they don't use them anymore, because yeah. people don't like soot anymore. Oh, that's strange. The, the government, mm. the Greens. All right, well, let's have a look at this thing, because it's pretty amazing how they've uh, who shorned shoehorned that motor in there <laughs> who sure <laughs> this is the patrol powered cummins no the cummins powered patrol get all my words backwards it's too early look at that patrol bonnet life struts that don't work pretty standard <laughs> what is that it's a tool oh, it's a tool pro patrol bonnet stayer opener someone's made a product look at that here it is it used to be clean it is dirty. So tell us what the motor is, how it came about. Actually, if you do want to find out more, they've got a full build episode on their channel. So what was a good five or six episodes, actually? Yeah, it's like 15. 15 it? episodes. <laughs> it's a, a pretty big job. Yep. So it's a um, it's a 6BT P-pump engine, but we've then swapped a 24-valve head on it. They're usually 12-valve. So it's kind of like a hybrid. Um, they didn't make them, except someone reckons they made them in a marine application with the 24 valve head and the P-pump. So it's kind of like the Unicorn engine that everyone thinks is the best one. Simple. I don't know if it is or not, but it's got plenty of torque. Yeah. Um, it's simple, reliable, makes the right power, all that. Yeah, so. makes heaps of noise like a, um, I don't know, a garbage truck. I guess it's probably... <laughs> it's real rattly. Yeah. But it goes hard. I'm keen to see how this thing goes in that little sprint challenge because I reckon it's got torque for days. Have you got any power numbers, horsepower or torque numbers, roughly from Dino Tunes? Um, it was about, well, we've only got wheel power and torque. So obviously this is all skewed because it's the dyno's reading what's coming out the back of the wheels. So yeah. you've got torque multiplication from the auto and that sort of thing. But it made like 300 horsepower and, I don't know, what was that, 1,800 foot Stupid pounds. Stupid torque. Of torque. That's not at the engine. That's what's coming out the back. So it's mm. it's a lot. Yep. As it should be for a 5.9 litre. So what else has been done? Like you've changed a couple of turbos. Yeah, I had a bigger turbo on it than this, and then I've just recently swapped out to this smaller one just to um, just give it a bit more boost response, get more boost into the engine to clean up the the um, smoke a bit. Yep. It's pretty hard to get these those P pumps right because they they're purely mechanical. Mm. So you put your foot on the throttle and on, yeah. it goes fuel. 
and that's it. You're gonna miss this, yeah. <laughs> so in a nutshell, doing a conversion to a patrol, what had to be custom made? Like obviously your engine mounts, sump differences, things like that. So yeah, what else? engine mounts. Um, we had to do some firewall fettling to bring the engine back as far as we could because yep. we needed room at the front for everything. Mm. Um, it's just got a copper brass um, TB45 radiator. Yep. Uh, two 12 inch thermos. Uh, these engines just don't get hot mm. ever. Like they, I don't know why. It's just after having, you know, yeah. TD42 life, you just go, why, <laughs> why isn't this engine overheating all the time? But, well, that's good. Yeah. Bonus. It's flat out getting it up to temperature, let alone overheating it. Yep. So, yeah. They're pretty easy on the cooling system, which is a nice change for patrol stuff. Sweet. Pretty happy with the layout. It's stuff like this. It's hard to get everything, you know, looking neat, and yeah. it's a lot of sort of you got to be pretty um, particular about how you lay things out. Think about where everything's going to go. Yeah. It's very easy when you drop an engine in doing conversions. Once the motor's in, you're like, sweet, looks yeah. neat, but it's all the hoses and, and fittings <laughs> and bits and pieces. And you add ten thousand like, ah. hoses and wires and stuff, yeah. and then it looks like a dog's breakfast. But yep. That's how it is. Awesome. All right. Well, I reckon it's time to jump in, take this in for a drive, see how it behaves, and then we've got our four challenges. All righty, in the big old Cummins Patrol. Really curious to drive this because I've been in a couple of big builds and conversions and barrows and LS and driven a Duramax, but never a Cummins. So it's good to try the different types out. From the get go, super rattly. As I was saying, P pump, the thing's like a bloody bus engine just sitting there idling away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did recently change the transmission cross member rubber kind of mount and it helped a lot of the vibration. I've been for running this before as a passenger and the thing was shaking everywhere but by changing that mount, a lot of the vibrations directly under your feet were sort of eliminated so it's really good. Yeah, if you're a diehard diesel fan, you love your big TDs and that, this is just like driving a truck, you'd froth it. It does feel very weighty in the front. It's probably one of the heaviest motors you can put in, eh? Oh, yes. It's just on the limit of, this few, is a stupid idea. A few hundred more kilos than a TD. So I don't think we discussed the gearbox in this. 4L ADE, so it's a four speed. It's been built, hasn't it? So yeah, it's, yeah, built by Hughes Performance in yep. Arizona. Yep. Uh, so yeah, specifically for Cummins. Yep. I mean, it feels like a patrol, like all the steering and brakes and everything um, are pretty, <laughs> pretty still, sloppy as usual. It still has the uh, shimmy at, uh, yep. I don't know, what is it, 70 k's an hour shimmy? Yep, yep. Has it warmed up enough yet to do a bit of a pull? Uh, we'll just sort of go half throttle. It, it never warms up, but yeah. You yeah. Can, Oh, I think they're just spinning wheels. <laughs> Man. It's a strange power, eh? It's just, normally with turbos and that, like, there's a bit of lag and whatnot, but, like, that's just the big capacity, just to torque from the get-go is just something different, eh? It's proper truck stuff. The weight does not worry. That's one thing. If, if you're in the market for, like, an engine that can just tow and pull anything and not be phased with anything, this is the way to go. We'll do one more little pull, and then I reckon it's time how to jump back in and we'll do these challenges. It's that rattly the GoPro's gone ham. It's just, oh, I've had enough. <laughs> we'll struggle to keep cameras on this thing. There we go. It just spins. You need to really put this thing on the tarmac and let it rip. All right, let's see what this thing does on the sprint. Alrighty, now we come to the fun part of the episode where we actually get to do the challenges. Been having a good day wheeling so far? I have, yeah. That's been, been great. Good. Now things get real, real. Now, nah, well, look, we've got our four challenges. Al may have seen some of this before. So we've got a little sprint challenge, which will be interesting with this. It's pretty heavy. Got torque for days. Got lots of torque <laughs> and lots of weight. That's it. <laughs> and then we've got our comfort challenge, obviously, a bucket of water on the, on the uh, bonnet. Then we've got a flex challenge, see how this thing goes, and then the economy as well. So we'll get straight into doing the uh, sprint challenge. So nice little stretch of road here, not too bumpy. You're just going to wind up that boost. There's a knob in there. You just I'll, I'll wound up all the knobs. <laughs> heaps of fuel, heaps of boost. Yeah, just fuel and. I'd suggest you go into four wheel drive as well. It's like page up the old school. You might struggle, struggle with traction. Drive, yeah, because you, you just want to get all the traction yeah. you can have. Mm. Right, enough chat. Let's get to it. See what this thing can do. All set up for the drag strip. The dirt road is good. Got the harrops locked in front and rear. Got the uh, shifter over into. Shift. 
But I'm just gonna do a countdown from three, and when I drop my arm, you just hammer it. In three, two, one, go! Oh my God, the soot! Dude, that thing is quick! Woo Dude, that was so quick. That's crazy. All right, so the time was, buddy record setting, 6.31. I actually think 6.31 is like literally that's, one of the quickest. It's a quarter mile, right? That's the quarter mile time. 100 Sam step sprint. Dude, that was so fast. There was just a cloud of smoke and soot. It was amazing. All right, well, the next challenge we got is the comfort challenge. Cup of water on the bonnet. This one's always a good laugh. We'll see what we come up with. All right, the inaugural comfort challenge. I don't know about the inaugural. I don't even know what that word means. So, cup of water on the bonnet. We found a nice little bend with a bit of a creek crossing. A little, little bit rough. Um, so obviously like before, like I said, 50 k's an hour or thereabouts. Break again and we'll see how much water's left in it. So I don't know if I've got enough water in here, but we'll see how we go. Alrighty, we'll see how we go with this. Oh. Might need some lemon squash in there, Al. Oh, no, here's a shit. oh, that's got some, that'll froth up. It'll fizz right. Oh, and we'll top it with some lemon squash. Look at that, we're gonna mix everything in here. Lemony goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, we'll let him go. We'll meet him at the other end and see what we're left with. I reckon I would have emptied that thing but just idling before I put a new gearbox mount in this thing. I had a solid mounting or shackle bush and the whole car vibrated at idle so bad. You might as well have been sitting on top of the valve cover. Oh, you can fire up and go in a sec. It's beautiful, man. It's got a Jeep transmission mount on it, which is. I don't know if that's good or bad. Radio, let's try for 50. It's a bit low on power, so I don't know whether it'll make it. Alrighty, he's going. He's sending it. That was amazing. I forgot to tell you there was a jump at the end, but you sent it. This car is that rattly. It sounds like a, what was a Mercedes bus or something from the coast. I don't know, that's what you're saying. All right, so that was pretty good. You were hooking around that corner and that's like above 75. What's between 75 and 80? Like a 76, I I reckon? call that about 70, yeah. 79 series. 77. All right, so we'll call it 77. I think I'll most be nice. of that fell out when it was idling. Did you catch it in your mouth? <laughs> it was all over the windscreen, actually. Good dust off. When it idles, it's just like something up. All right, there we go. The last challenge we've got to have a look at is the fuel economy. So I'm going to get Al to fill up on the way back, and we'll see what it comes up with. Can you try and actually do an actual economy test? You're hilarious. What is your estimate? Um, I don't know. It's somewhere between light stuff and. <laughs> Maybe Between 16 to 20 litres, maybe? Oh, uh, yeah, probably 20. I'm going to try and get a number off him. Maybe when you drive home, just fill up and see how many Ks you've done or something. Well, let's just say you had a TB45 <laughs> and it was using 20 litres per 100. Well, it's like that, except for you've got like five times the power. So. Yeah, you're right. It's not as bad as the LS, I don't think. But you saw how much soot came out with that sprint. Woo! I crazy. It down too. All right, so the next challenge is the flex ramp challenge. Do your rear wheel, reverse up. So we'll reverse up. This is a pretty damn nice mound to be honest. Pretty perfect. Woo! Keeps going. Yep. That's about it. So now we're gonna get creative and measure this. Normally I have a flex ramp or a forklift or something. I had to get real creative with doing this, but uh never gonna get it out. No, it's very scientific, trust me, I've done worse. <laughs> what do you want? Do you want 97 or 100? I want 100. You want 100? Straight cred. Oh, he's just broken every record in the book. No, to be honest, this thing's flex really good. I reckon you're too high. Play this the is the, the well. hardest thing I've ever had to like. God, this is bloody hard work, man. <laughs> but we're nowhere near the ground over there. Let's just say it's more than a meter. What's oh, that? Oh, look at that. What's that sitting Three at? Three meters. 
Hey, just put the camera down and we'll cut back to it. They're like, voila. Have you got a flex ramp? Yes, but not here. Well, we'll bring it around one day and we'll do it. How about that? We'll get back to you, Barry. No, I don't have one anymore. This was back in WA. All right, we'll get back to you then. All right, let's roll to the credits and see how this thing stacks up against the other cars we've filmed. Right, right, guys, it is time to have a look at the tally board and see how this thing stacked up. Now, remember, all the cars that we film here on the Rig Rundown series get put on these leaderboards, so definitely check them out. And if you want to go back and have a look at some of the top contenders, definitely do that in the playlist for the Rig Rundowns on our channel. But before we get into Owls Patrol, I mentioned at the start of the episode, you can win a complete ultimate upgrade brake kit from Bendix. All you gotta do is jump over to the Bendix Instagram page, find the post of Owls Patrol that they've just put up tonight, which is the Wednesday, Go and leave a comment there. Let us know what vehicle you drive and you can go on the running to win your very own brake upgrade kit. So let's get straight into, have a look at these challenges. Now the first one is no surprise. He absolutely nailed it. It's automatic. The thing just ate it up with the amount of torque it's got. We came in with a 631. Now that is the number one spot. Now Jeremy's been there for a long time in his compound turbo at Hilux. And that thing is automatic as well. Now ours being automatic and the amount of torque it's got, there's no surprise. We finally pit the post and get him on the top spot there. So now moving on to the comfort challenge, we've got 77%. Now this is interesting because it matches exactly another GE Patrol that we filmed on this channel. So that may say a thing or two. Curtis is one, completely different suspension setup. So that just goes to show the patrols are about the same sort of mark. Moving on to the flex challenge. Now Al did actually finally send me a photo on the forklift and no, it was not over a meter. It just did not sound right. It came out at 650 millimeters, which sounds a little bit more sensible, which put him in fifth place. So not so bad. And that's kicked off the uh, EC Ram there. Kale's Ram uh, was in 10th position there. That's gone out the window. Moving on to the fuel economy, same sort of deal. He did do a little bit of a test on the drive home and after doing the cruiser park and the long drive, which is about a two hour drive to his place, he filled up and the average was 25 liters per hundred. He must have been having his foot down all weekend, let me tell you what. Now that has not even got him anywhere on the leaderboard. So 25 liters per hundred, not the greatest economy if you've got a Cummins in your patrol. Anyway guys, make sure to jump over to the Bendix Instagram page, enter that competition to win a break upgrade kit and we will see you guys in the next Built Not Board episode. Hello guys and welcome to Built Not Bought HQ. Make sure to click on the far left to subscribe to the channel. Click down below to see the latest episode if you missed it. And don't forget our merchandise on our website. See you in the next episode.